I was just reading an exhortation this week from our dearly beloved brother Charles Spurgeon, encouraging preachers that preach to not be hypocrites. If they proclaim it from the pulpit, then they are to be living it. Amen. And uh, Brother Gene, that's the thing I'm, I'm so thankful about your conversation. You are a great testimony of faithfulness. And your children are following in your footsteps. They too are faithful, faithful to the Lord. And that is, brethren, the seriousness of this text is that this is a picture of what God does to a faithless people in whom he has invested much. So I think the first and the last verse you've chosen, Brother Gene, and the one following the last verse is, is, a, is a great summation of the spirit of what God is showing here. And so I'll, let me just read this again. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went whoring with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, his people. There's some people that tell us that can't happen. Here's the record. And he abhorred his own inheritance. He strongly was, he was repulsed by them. Thus he, he gave them a certificate of divorce and sent them away. I just want to highlight the seriousness of unfaithfulness. Okay? And let me, let me begin by saying this, that the church is to be a prepared bride for Christ Jesus. Remember when Paul talked to the Corinthians, this was his great concern for this church, is that they should be corrupted from the simplicity, simple devotion, only devoted to Christ, unto other things. His great desire, one of the great desires the Apostle Paul had among the churches is that he might present them as a chaste virgin to Christ. And whenever he saw their affections being turned aside to other things, that was ultimately very serious to the Apostle Paul. And it is a very serious thing. Brethren, it's a very serious thing. So I want to highlight the seriousness of that this morning. Let us also remember this, that the scriptures in other places have given a record of God's indignation of his people, times where he has, he has abhorred them. And uh, we have uh, the record in the scripture. He tells us these things are written. These are examples. They're written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the age has come. In other words, that's another way of saying, like I've said this morning, God does not change. If this is how God felt about unfaithfulness in Israel, this is still the way God feels about unfaithfulness today. If anything, it's become more serious. Mm -hmm. Because the more God invests and dispenses to his people, the more serious it is when they should be turned aside and to depart from that. That is, that is, very serious. And one of the great examples of that, of course, is A.D. 70. The Lord has said himself that there never has been nor ever will be a judgment so severely leveled against the people as it was leveled against that nation in that time. Remember prior to that, Jesus had said, I would have gathered you as a hen gathers her chicks, but you were not willing. The Son of God manifest in the flesh, in your midst, teaching in your synagogues for all that time and all that investment. At the end of it, they were unfaithful. AD 70 is what happens when you're unfaithful. Judgment falls. And it's a very, very, very serious thing. And I'll tell you, if it was that serious, if it was that serious, when Jesus walked among them in the flesh, how much more serious is it now in the day when the true light now shines? Think, brethren, of how many marvelous benefits God has poured out through Christ Jesus to the church. He has multiplied to us the grace of God that's available to us. We can come to the throne of grace to receive help, find mercy and help in the time of need. He's given us the indwelling of his Holy Spirit to guide us and to direct us. We have, the, we have the adoption. We really are new in Christ Jesus, see? We're new creatures, we are. We have access to the Father through Christ Jesus. He is the way. All of these marvelous blessings that he's poured out. And then you get to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter two. Verse 
and verse 1 to 3, and he speaks to all of us who are living in this marvelous age of richness before God. He says, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip, which means they can. They can slip from you. They can slip from you. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast in every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? So I, I just want to highlight the seriousness of this because we happen to be living in a time where unfaithfulness is one of the chief marks of Babylon. We talk so much about Babylon. She is a harlot. That's what she is. And a harlot's job is to turn a faithful spouse away from the spouse that they have espoused themselves to. That's the job of a harlot. Many, many and I want to be very prudent here, but many marriages have been broken up by harlots. See? And that's exactly what Babylon is. So I think, I think the best way I can exhort you, and I'll be very general about this, I would wish, I would wish to be more specific but I know that you have an anointing. I know that. And you know all things. And you need not that any man teach you. These, the, the Lord will, will, will make these things very specific to your own hearts. You will know how to battle with this exhortation. But I think this is an appropriate exhortation for today. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Amen. So let me just take that backwards. Amen. Don't make a provision for the flesh. If God says destroy the nations and distance yourself from the world, mm -hmm. you have to do that. Amen. That is said with your beneficence in mind. Mm -hmm. There is no way, brethren, that you can maintain some kind of an equal yoke with the world without becoming like the world. That's right. And so let's begin right at home. Mm -hmm. Think of yourself as, as like, think of part of you as like the nations. There's a part of you that are rebels. They want to turn you aside. We call it the flesh. All of you have it. You have an enemy right here at home. So here's an encouragement. Destroy it. <laughs> and every time it raises its ugly head, destroy it. The best way to weaken the flesh is not to feed it. Right? Amen. The best way to strengthen it is to give it bread mm -hmm. and to give it drink. Mm -hmm. So, brother, when the flesh cries out, just don't feed it. Be merciless with your own flesh. Be merciless with it. Never, ever feed it because that is always a precursor to a fall. So make not provision for the flesh. But I'll tell you the greater thing, and this is associated with what Sister June was saying this morning. When she said the will is not an entity of itself, but it's actually compelled along by a nature, that was marvelous because this is something the Lord's been showing me. I have been strongly desiring to be an excellent minister to the Lord himself. And I happen to know that doesn't just happen. And it requires that your desire toward the Lord be greatly increased because you minister according to your desire. Everybody, whatever you do, everybody does according to their desire. Wherever your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Every man lives this way. Whatever you want the most is what you're going to spend your time for. And so here's something that I've been asking the Lord. I know that my ability to serve you faithfully will be consistent with my vision of you. If I see a little God, I'm going to serve him a little. But our God isn't little. He's got great beauty. It was so great, even in the, it, what you might call a twilight era of revelation compared to what we have, that David said, this one thing I want. I've seen beauty, and I want to see more. And his faithfulness to God corresponded to his understanding of God. Amen. And so your will, brethren, you're not strong enough to shape your own will, and you can't increase your own desire. But there is a way for your desire to be increased. It will be increased as you see more clearly the revelation of God in Christ Jesus. That's the wonderful context with which your affection greatly abounds. And as your affection abounds, your service for God will abound more. So here's how God's taught me, to, taught me to fight. I continually ask the Lord, help me to see you more clearly. Because every time I've seen you, it's united my heart to fear your name and to serve you with more zeal. I know I, I, I don't trust in my own will. 
like Brother Given has said, you don't have a full control over your own will or you could stop thoughts before they ever entered your mind. But there is a knowledge from heaven that when God is seen clearly, it makes your will strong to serve the Lord singly. And, and in the process of that, you see the utter absurdity of flesh. It seems only reasonable to destroy the nations. It seems only reasonable to not live close to the nations so that your affections can be turn, turned aside. It's only reasonable to live close to the Lord. So, so I just pray that these things will come across clearly because this has been so, so wonderful to kind of see this. I mean, that, that the, brethren, that this really works. I got no other way of really saying this. This works. Amen. And so, brother, let me encourage you with this. And uh, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't make provisions for the flesh. Amen. I open it up for your, for your comments this morning. Brother Jeremy.